Hey guys, so in this tutorial we'll cover on how to create a moving platform with Godot with one-way collision. So you can jump from the bottom and land solidly on the top. We'll use a Pathfall 2D and a Kinematic Body 2D. And we'll also talk about the common problems we have with creating one-way collision platforms and how to solve these problems. The first problem we'll discuss is falling through the moving platforms. If you trivially just set the one-way collision flag noted on the upper right there, um, you will sometimes fall through these moving platforms. You'll notice a lot more with rigid body 2Ds, but it also happens with kinematic body 2Ds. The other problem I notice is that sometimes you can't jump or there'll be weird behavior on moving platforms. This can be caused by a margin of collision. And so actually what happens is the kinematic body will detect a collision as it's jumping and stop the jump action. So the first thing we'll do is create a scene for our moving platform. Then we'll add a folder to keep the scene organized. But this is not a necessary step, as there's probably not many artifacts for this. Then we add the graphics to be rendered for the moving platform. In my case, it's a tile map, but you can have anything you want here. As you can see here, I had to readjust some settings that were already set for the tile map, like the size of the tiles. If you just clone an exist the existing tile map, you probably get around this problem. Okay, so now we're going to create the path fo follow 2D. Path follow 2D is important because what it will do is follow a path. So this will actually be child node of a path that we're going to create. When we save off the entire moving platform scene, it will have the parent node of a path. So then when we instance that entire scene which contains all the moving platform details, all we can do is just have to draw um, dots to draw the path. So it makes it a lot easier to instance as we go and have different paths for all our moving platforms. Here we're going to check one-way collision on this moving platform piece tile map. But remember, this doesn't work correctly currently with Godot 3.1. So we're going to show a workaround after all this. But first we're going to show how it fails. So now we check that the shape is one-way collision so we can jump from the bottom and actually pass through. But also, usually when you use a tile map, there'll be static bodies uh, by default if you have collision set. So we want to make sure that that's not the case here. We want kinematic, so we can check this right here. Now we'll make a script for the movement of the moving platform along the path. I tend to like to use a script for this just because you can configure it easier. When you're moving it about, you can actually export the variable that controls the speed, things like that. But you can easily use an animation player, which you've probably seen other tutorials do. First we'll make a function to move along the path. This will use a unit offset variable which controls the current location on the path that the platform is moving upon. The minimum value of unit offset is zero. The maximum value is one. So just keep this in mind. So when you're at one, you're at the full length of your curve. So the end of the curve. And when you're at zero, you're at the beginning of the curve. Note that enum called direction. So when we want, we go all the, way, all the way to the end of this curve, we want to turn around. So this keeps track of which way we're going. So when we swap directions, we're going to go backwards. So maybe we'll go from one down to zero. And when we go forwards, we'll go from 0 to 1. I decided to export that speed variable. Now it'll be accessible from the, that particular node of the script, so you can easily change it without having to change the script itself. I'll show that later. And I'm planning on actually having the, one, the parent above it that actually controls the curve have it also accessible. Here I use lerp to slowly transition between the different directions as we move. And so we never speed up too quickly or, or slow down too quickly.
Okay, now that moving platform scene is complete, so let's add it to the main scene so we can test it out. <laughs> Since it's the same as the other uh, tiles here, it's hard to differentiate at first, so I had to move it around a little bit to find it. So now we'll draw the dots for the curve that the platform will follow. When moving the curve points around, be sure you don't accidentally scale. That's what's happening here. Oops, I had a rotate checked for the follow path uh, 2D. So just make sure that's unchecked so it won't start rotating. Unless you want our platform to rotate. Make sure you have your curve that you're creating is local to scene. This way when you edit the curve it won't change every single curve for every platform that exists. Alright, I'm going to add the move on path function to the physics process and we're going to test it out. And as you can see, he falls right through. So we expected that and I'll show you how to fix it. Let's start by removing the physics collider from the tile map itself. Now we'll make the moving platform a kinematic body and add a collision shape manually to it. Here I noticed after changing the tile set for the moving platform it affected my normal tile set, so I'm fixing that. This is just a little code cleanup. I also noticed a bug where you can't have it actually go to all the way to the ends of the path. The moving platform will end up jumping to the other side sometimes if you do this. So what I'll do is I'll set it to a really high value close to 1 and a low value very close to 0, but not all the way at 0 or all the way at 1. This is probably due to floating point errors. This is just to show that we can recreate the problem without using the collider that's inside the tile map. This is just using like what we had before with the kinematic body for the uh, moving platform and the manually created uh, collision shape that we just did with one-way collision set, and we can show the same bug. So now I'll turn off the one-way collision and show you another problem. Alright, let's take a look at another problem I found. So on the moving platforms, there's an issue where you cannot jump. I'm pushing jump a bunch of times. The character kind of twitches. I found this is a margin of safety problem in the collision detection for kinetic, uh, kinematic bodies. So I'll show you how to solve that. Alright, so I opened up the uh, hero character here. And you can see on the right there's a margin of safety for this kinematic body. This is a kinematic body selected here. So I found about 0.3 to be about a good safety margin. I'm actually just kind of iterating on different values that would work. And it's really interesting because uh, I've seen other examples where this does, isn't a problem. And you can just use move and slide with snap and it'll work fine. And uh, you can see I'm zeroing out so you can jump. So that's an interesting part uh, you may run into when you're implementing this. And it's easily solvable, but it took quite a while to figure out what was wrong. Because when you debug this, it doesn't really appear like there's anything going wrong. The safe margin here prevents bodies from colliding that are very close together. So it acts like, like another little padding around the object. This is our issue here, when a character tries to jump, it registers a collision, so it no longer jumps, it cancels the jump action. So this having a, a larger margin around the object will make it to where we can jump. Now we'll start working on implementing the solution to the one-way collision problem that we have. First we'll start by making a raycast for the head. This raycast will disable the collision as we're jumping. We'll make a similar raycast on the floor that will enable collisions so we can land properly on top of a platform and have the collision work. Now 
Now we'll add a script to the raycast. This will enable or disable collisions depending on the context that we set. So if you look at the disable collisions boolean on top, this will disable if true or enable if false. And so we'll have an orientation of disabling on the top raycasts and enabling on the bottom ones. Just a moment ago, you may have noticed that we had a wall loop here to check while it's colliding. But I noticed there was a bug in uh, Godot which, in which you, if you add an exception to that particular collision and loop through, it still keeps showing up. The main problem was that it was a tile map node. And you can see there's an issue open right now in the GitHub uh, Godot repo. I'll put a link below so you can check it out. And this is pretty much what I'm talking about here. Here I'll start adding all the raycasts for the head and start repositioning them. You'll notice I have some on the left and right at different particular angles and there'll be some on the ground that will re-enable all the collisions that it touches. Here I clone all the head raycasts and put them on the ground. And then just make sure the disable collisions flag is unset. Here I set the physics body that the collision exceptions will be set against. And don't forget to actually enable all your raycasts. For some reason by default Godot makes these disabled when you first create them. So here I readjusted the uh, raycast. You'll all notice that you'll have to kind of tweak these depending on how your character jumps. Um, so just remember that. You get to move these around make sure the collisions are turned off when these hit and these are turned on when, uh, when these hit. So it takes a little bit of fine refinement, and then also um, I had to adjust the, uh, the part of the platform, the one-way collision adapter code. So if this gets re-enabled when the ground uh, ray casts hit too quickly, you'll just end up maybe not even jumping through the object, or you'll get stuck and just kind of end up right on top and not jumping naturally. So I decided to do like a 0.2 second timeout here. And that just means this will yield and just execute this a little bit later. So hopefully when the jump is completed, it'll just re-enable it and look a lot more natural. By the way, a really nice feature of Godot is you can turn on collision shapes and see what's going on. And so that's just right here. You can just turn that on right there. And now when you run it, you'll actually see the shapes. All right, it's time to see how our, all our hard work has paid off here. These are all our cool results with the collision shapes on. And these are the final results you'd want to see in a game with all the collision shapes off. Alright guys, that's all I got for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, just like or comment and subscribe to uh, get more tutorials like this. And feel free to ask me any questions below. And also, all the code will be included in the